Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week, we have Odell Lamartinaire, owner of Lamar Properties. This week, as always, we have Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. I've had a lot of struggles. It was not always good financially. I was real lucky, though. I had a real supportive wife. She was a registered dietitian, and uh, a lot of times we would depend, you know, on on her salary. She was the breadwinner. I mean, I guess you could say that. Her her income was uh, more reliable. I was off building a dream, man. I was off buying houses and and remodeling houses and just working a, a whole lot. And, you know, as time passed, the money got better and the the jobs got better and uh, and so forth and so on. But, you know, struggling in those early years, having a good wife was v- very important. The, yeah, the Not just in the Has early she, years. She uh, literally supported years. you and supported you. you know? Yeah, she, she, she supported me and financially, I guess you could say, supported me me i wasn't a bum i still brought home money of course you know what i'm saying but uh she had to pull the weight man while we were building our our dream you know it it started off my dream and of course she supported that and she could understand the vision but she wasn't as interested in it as as i was you know as time past our company grew then it was it was ine- inevitable that she had to come work for us yeah yeah it um, became really apparent oh absolutely and now yeah. once she got in there she got real uh, you know real good at what she does i wouldn't be where i'm at today if it wouldn't be for her in the early days and today yeah. You know, she's we, gonna we, love this episode. <laughs> yeah, she, well, she's she's a go getter. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, uh, you yeah. don't want to owe her money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so she would come after it. <laughs> or in the early days, was your vision really clear to, My, to you to yourself? It was crystal clear. It was scary clear. I knew that I was going to be right here a long time ago. Yeah, I, I knew that. Now. I did miss it by maybe 10 years because, you know, we always want to achieve more in a shorter amount of time. In reality, it takes time. My first light bulb moment. (laughs) Oh, that's a light bulb. Okay. the, The truth is we all think we can get there so much quicker than it's 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 reality right that's exactly right and it takes a whole heck of a lot more work than we think it takes a lot more work and a lot more dedication man i tell you even though it's fun i don't now but i probably went 15 years where i just get up three four o'clock in the morning and go to work to some degree it's not a big secret that you can let's call it out succeed somebody because when you work in 30 percent more more hours than they are then you're going to produce 30 percent more yeah so sometimes it's just a matter of doing what you're doing more i always say you get your fair share if you do more and you're worth more you get your fair share if you don't do anything you get your fair share too you get that lower fair share that's right because that's your fair share <laughs> that, 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 that's right so i'm going to be honest with you I'm, I'm fascinated with your business model with your company i love that you've brought your family and, and you have your family involved but a lot of people don't know what you do you kind of fly under the radar if you will but you're doing some important things for a lot of people so tell me about the company and and the model and and why you do what you do. So what we do to encourage home ownership is we more or less kind of finance houses to people temporarily. We do it through a lease to own option. Okay. So what that means is if your credit is not perfect or you're going through a divorce or some other, you have undocumented income, whatever the roadblock is that is keeping you from owning a home, that's what we try to eliminate. We try to eliminate that roadblock and we try to give you some time 
to pay down on this house a little bit so you can go out and you can get traditional financing. Got it. And the way that I found that there was a real big market in this was in the 07, 08, when the crash hit, I was building spec houses. I had a few older rent homes, okay, but I didn't have much rental property. But I was building specs and the mortgage market fell out and I had probably 10 houses on the ground. I was getting aggressive. They were starter homes. There wasn't expensive homes, but I had maybe 10 of them on the ground. And I decided, well, this is a good time for me to grow my rental portfolio. Yeah. So I rented a couple of them out. Okay. And then I started saying, well, maybe I could finance these to some people. So I started asking for $5,000 down and then I sold a few like that. And then, well, maybe I'll do 10,000 down. Well, maybe I'll do $15,000 down or maybe I'll do $20,000 down. (laughs) And that's when the light bulb went off. There is a market for alternate financing out of the ordinary financing to encourage home ownership. So that's where it kind of took off quickly in 06, 07, during that mortgage crunch. Before that, I had a handful. I had maybe a dozen houses, maybe. I I don't know if I had that many. But I was diligent about paying those down. I had some equity in them, had some appreciated value. So I was able to leverage some of that stuff and get into the, let's call it the newer rentals, less maintenance, less headache, and so forth and so on. And, And also, you know, helping people. Yeah, you are. Uh, they don't all succeed, but I tell you what, over the years, I bet I could line up a few dozen that are very thankful that we had this program. Oh, I, you know I, I, mean? gar- I guarantee yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's a light bulb moment in there too. Yes. So yeah. you're talking about how you go $5,000 down and do that 10, 15, 20, till you found your sweet spot. Yeah, till you find you, your sweet spot. You let the market determine your business model. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah, the sweet spot changes. Depends uh, on how much discretionary income people have. Absolutely. Right. And and not only in real estate, construction, and all that fun stuff, that is a tip that anybody can take in any business. Any business, that's right. Launch, keep iterating, figure it out, and then when you nail it, you nail it. Yes, You, you got it. Yep. Good for you. Yep. Good for you. So I love also that you've brought your, your family. We talked about your wife. And, and I, I I love how you talk about her, but your I know your daughter and your son is in there. Tell tell me about bringing making it a kind of a family business. Some people don't want their kids to do what they do. Yeah, and and I'm just the opposite. If I don't want my kids to do it, then I don't want to do it. So from just about day one, especially when I started having children. I knew that this was going to be a long lasting thing that I was going to be able to pass on to the children and for them to learn by example and learn the business. And and it's happening before my eyes. Yeah. My daughter's a realtor. My my youngest son is an intern with us, Lamar Properties intern. Uh, he's going to school just like anybody else goes to school. My oldest son is a commercial a superintendent for commercial contractors. So maybe one day we're hoping that he brings some of that commercial experience back to us. We're primary residential. Mm-hmm. We do do some small commercial work and we're capable of doing that. Hopefully one day we'll all be able to live off of this thing. And, and wouldn't yeah. that be great? You yeah, know I mean? absolutely. So you said your son is kind of in Lamar Properties. I, I'm going to call it Lamar Academy. Right? He's in Lamar Academy. That's yeah. what he's in. Uh, Tell me about that. Well, when he when he graduated high school, he thought about, you know, doing a few things. He didn't want to go to college. Yeah. Finally, one day he said, Mama, Daddy, I want to do what y'all do. I want y'all to teach me what y'all do. So I told him, I said, well, listen, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to go four years. You know, I'm going to pay you very little. (laughs) You're going to work very hard, but you're going to get it. But you're going to have to learn all aspects of the business. So I love it. He's with his mama in the office and, you know, he's doing paperwork. He's doing spreadsheets. He's cutting grass. He's doing labor work. He's doing office work. The ultimate goal is for him to get his contractor's license. 
still operate under us because it's, it's no sense have two companies Cor- to correct. pay for. He has landed uh, a few of his own jobs. He's very motivated when he gets to go out without daddy and make a f- few hundred bucks on a small job. That's how we all start. Yeah. And those jobs are going to get bigger and bigger. And I told him one day, you're not going to even want my paycheck. Yeah, exactly. You gonna have, yeah. Isn't that going to be wonderful? <laughs> so, w- how far along is he in uh, Lamar Academy? Well, he just he'll be a senior in May next that's month. A, that he'll, is he'll, so great. Yeah, he'll that be is so great. He's got one more year. This year is going to be building lots of starter homes. We're going to be okay. we're going to be starting a lot of those. We got a ninety lot subdivision coming up, and then he's going to start studying for his contractor's license and, and eventually get that. So, yeah, he's headed in the right direction. And my daughter's real estate, uh, despite the economy right now, she's doing well. Yeah. We're new grandparents. Oh, congratulations. (laughs) So uh, they're much better than your own kids. Yeah, yeah. I'm (laughs) telling you, man. That's great. That is great. So so life life is pretty good right now. We're happy. Yeah, yeah. We've always been happy, but... We, we feel like we're accomplishing something. Yeah. And, and, and I swear to you, you're doing it for the right reasons. You're, do, you know, you're helping people that otherwise may not be able to live the American dream and have, have their own house. Some of them just never get a chance. No. Some of them never get a chance. And I tell you what, it, it's a real good feeling when you see somebody succeed. Yeah. Yeah. No so, doubt about and, it. And it's heartbreaking when you see them fail. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It it is. You know what I mean? You don't wish that on anybody. You want everybody to succeed. But in today's world, there's there's failure. Yeah, sure. You know, that's just the way it goes. The construction and the real estate business is tough. You know, it it, is. It It is. I want to go back to where you started, why you started and and how you got started. When I was 19 years old, I bought my uh, first rent house with the with the help of my father in law. He was in the rent house business um he had some typical rent rental properties you know i just took it from there and uh i just never never wanted to work for somebody else long term i always wanted to do my own thing wanted to be my own boss i didn't mind working for it Uh, obviously yeah like i said i i I, for 15 years, I, I just got up crazy time. My wife would think I was just crazy, just getting up and she'd call it in the middle of the night. Yeah. Where did you go in the middle of the night? I say, wasn't the middle of the night. It was like 3.30, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> You're like a Marine. You do more before nine than most people do all day. Look, I tell you, man, and it's not surprising. You know, you look back on things and you, you would like to think that you're real smart, but you're not. You just did a couple of things that other people people don't want to do nobody wants to get up at 3 30 yeah nobody yeah. wants to go put their neck on the line for millions of dollars of loans and and so forth and so on it's not that you have to be smart you just have to be diligent and you have to want it absolutely you, know? you have to want it you have to make really good decisions though you have to make good decisions because it that's hard and again you work harder you get your fair share that's yeah. right. It's sort of a it's formula. It's what you put in, you get yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly right. Absolutely. What's been the best thing? Is it keeping the family together, together or helping these people? What's been the best thing about Lamar Property? I mean, my family is the most important thing in the world. My, you know, family and faith, our yeah. church, and that's nothing right. is more important than that. Besides that, yeah, helping people. That's yeah. yeah. That's the number one thing. When you, when you can just see them succeed. And you get to make money. You get yeah, to yeah. profit. Make a living. You get You're to right. make good, clean money. That's, you know, that's right. earned money. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And and there's no better feeling than everybody winning. Yeah, in that. In that, I the mean, truth. when everybody wins, it's just you can't do no better yeah, when you get yeah. two winners. No, I'm, 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 well, it, and it's actually. It's probably more than two winners. They're winning, you're winning, the community wins. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah, you're and, right. And, you're right. And it's a ripple effect, too. You know, they're in these a new home. They thought they could never get in. All of a sudden, their kids are going to be at another level because they were in a, a well-established home. home that's, right? that's right. So that's right. The, it's a ripple effect. That it, uh, home I just owner, hope you understand Home ownership is sometimes the only asset that uh, people get to pass to their children. That's right. They don't have nothing else, but they got their house paid. Mm-hmm. So that helps that next generation give them a, a boost. A, a good start. Uh, that's you're, 
right. You're exactly right. And I, and I tell you what else is a good feeling too is, you know, when the economy's bad, work is a little slow. We just keep on building. You know, we just keep on building. And the people that we employ are subcontractors. Yeah. You know, I got 20 year relationships with some of these people. And it's nice to you, you mentioned the ripple down effect. Well, man, it, it do, doesn't it ripple? You yeah, know, yeah. it just no, ripples no, no all the way down it. to the painter. And, and to his the family, concrete man, uh, his uh, family. That's exactly right. All of that, you know, and it's being entrusted with a lot of responsibility because the bank's giving you this money mm-hmm. and you got to go and make these products and, and account for all that money and make sure all that money helps people and to make sure you can make some money too yeah so yeah, you no, can no doubt. so you, so you can live so yeah, you can yeah. you can keep going and it it gets a little easier with time it, it's a challenge yeah exactly yeah. Did, did, was there a big learning curve with the banking system and all that uh banking's tough you got to know what each individual bank wants uh and the reason why i know this is because i've been turned down probably 80 out of 100 times really oh yeah yeah banks are finicky and they have a whole set of drama that goes behind the curtains dealing with their finances like how much money they got into automobiles how much money do they have into cars how much money they got so you could go in there and you could have the best plan to develop a subdivision but they got too much subdivisions right now so it don't matter how good you are Got you know it. what I mean? Got it. And and once you get to know those bankers, they'll disclose some of that to you. But before that, you just get mad and you think they don't like you. Yeah. But you have to put a deal together that that particular bank will like at that time. That huge, it, it, huge light bulb moment. Oh, God, yes. And, and it's not for just contractors, right? No, it, no. It, right. It's for any company, these banks are leveraged, I guess. And some might have a bunch of car loans and that's, that's right. the game they play. And then they just don't have much money available for home construction. Right. We call, them, so you, you, we call them buckets. Yeah, they got yeah. a bucket for rent houses. They got a bucket for spec houses, a bucket for subdivisions, a bucket for consumer loans. Yeah. In 08, when the mortgage thing crashed, nobody wanted to lend money. To build spec houses. That was big taboo, man. That was risky business. But I had a banker that taught me, don't come apply for a spec house. Come apply to build a rent house. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we take it out of this bucket and we put it in this it's bucket. It's how you categorize it's, it when you put the package together. It's, how you, it's what you call it. You oh, don't want to use the word goodness. spec back in their day. So just something as simple as that. And over the years, I just learned how to read my tax returns and more importantly, how to interpret them, how to transplant them to financial statements Correct. and interpret all that. Once you learn the rules and how the system works, y- you can prepare your paperwork to where it's more advantageous to get a loan or not. Bankers are smart. They know their business and all that, but some of them are lazy. So (laughs) you have to give it to them and say, hey, the number you're looking for is at the bottom of the page right there. You see it right there? That's the ratio you're looking for, right? That's incredible. Yeah. So they like that too. When Odell comes, all that stuff's figured out. So it makes it easy. You got to make their job easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's you know that's, that that uh, is outstanding. <laughs> it, it really is. It's it, it bankers are 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 finicky sometimes. Sure, you sure. Know, that's just how yep. it is. Yep. I used to get mad at them and all that. Now I just go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I, don't, it, I don't get mad no more. I just so go to great. the next guy and and he's got a new bucket over there so so what what's next for Lamar Properties and all the stuff you're doing you just going to keep doing what you're doing 80% of what we're going to do in the future is going to be exactly what got us where we are now gotcha. and that's building affordable houses that you can lease rent or sell that's the ingredients so you can't build them too expensive because you can't get the return on the rent that's right you know you have to play it smart and you have to put out a product that will not get you in a bind because you got three outs you can own or finance it you can rent it or you or you can sell it yeah, one, one of the other correct. we build good 
homes. This not no fast assembly line like some of the national builders. Yep. That is not, that is not us. We're it's family built. It's built like I built it twenty something years ago. I frame it the same way. Yep. I don't take shortcuts. If you buy a house from me, you 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 kind of get lucky because I built that house to keep. I made some good decisions on this house because I didn't know whether I was going to give it to you or I was going to keep it. Yep. So I don't, some of the shortcuts I can't take because I'll pay for it. Yeah, sure. Later sure. on myself. You yeah, know what I mean? Correct. Correct. Uh, so we try to put out a good product, uh, but we're going to keep doing the same thing. I love it. We're going to keep doing the same thing. You know, we, we talked about the ripple effects with everybody involved, your subcontractors. I, at one point had three rent houses and an apartment complex. Mm -hmm. Basically, I didn't have enough doors to have a crew, right? So I was doing everything myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude, it drove me crazy. What threshold do you have to get to where you, you go, okay, I need a crew. I got this many houses or I have this many doors in an apartment complex. We don't have many staffed people. You know, you know we use subcontractors and we kind of lucky because the guy that's got three to five houses, it's hard for him to have any kind of leverage or relationship with a plumber or electrician. Correct. We're building houses, and these guys know. Look, man, I got to go fix Odell's stuff because <laughs> I want the next. I, one. <laughs> I want the next house. You know what That's I mean? Right. So it's kind of easier yeah, if you're yeah. in the building business to to eliminate some of those vendor problems. I can't find a plumber. I can't find it. You know what I mean? Usually we can we can find them and we have them pretty pretty close to us. Yeah, I love it. Think about the guy who's who's going to get in the real estate game or the construction game today. What's a business tip you would tell him or her? Be patient and work hard. Just just work more than the other people. If your friends are working 40 hours a week, work 60. Yeah. Because it, it, you're not going to make it just dilly-dallying around. And don't be scared to take some calculated risk. Don't get crazy, but put your money in something good and something solid, a, little, a good solid house or a good solid piece of land or something that you know is going to go up in value yeah. and treat the people right. It will come back to you. Be honest with the people. You know, don't be a sleazy car salesman. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're going to make money for a few years doing that, and you might make a lot of money, but it's going to come to an end because it catches up with you. So you can't, you can't, you can't run from it. You got to do right. Yeah. That to is, be successful. That is amazing you, advice. You got to do right. So as you come into contact with people, I don't care if it's a contract, subcontractor, or a new home buyer, mm -hmm. how do you hope to leave people different and better than when you met them? I hope they just think that I'm sincere. I want people to think I'm a nice guy. You know what I mean? And uh, I want them to think that I'm not just in it for me. By default, I have to include you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to include you, but by default, I have to. I have to include customers. You have to have happy customers. I hope they just think I'm an honest, good businessman and a good family man. Uh, I love my family. I hope we all we're real close right now. I hope we stay that way. Yeah, I, I think we do. will. I, I think, think we will. I, think I hope too. so. Thanks for tuning in to I Finally Get It. To find out more about Odell and what he's got going on, visit our show notes at ifinallygetit.com. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you're a business owner or entrepreneur and you have an idea that would help other business owners and entrepreneurs, send me an email at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.